بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Kororia ki te atua, i runga rawa, he maunga rongo ki te mata o te whenua, he whakaro pai ki ngā tangata kato, tēnā tātou kato. Glory be to God above, peace upon the earth and goodwill to all. Ko tainu i te waka, ko hautapu te maunga, ko awaroa te awa, Ko ngāti mani a poto te iwi, ko ngāti ngutu te hapu, ko rākau nui te marae, ko Daniel Raua, ko Matty Green, tōku matua, ko Lucy Ahau. I would like to first give thanks and praise to Allah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, the Almighty, and pay tribute to our beloved Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. I would like to send blessings to International Imamia Medics as well as MITV. Welcome everyone and salam alaikum um, to a special broadcast part of my TV's Muharram programming. I'm your host, Shifa Bas, and today we're focusing on Imamia Medics International in New Zealand and Australia. This is part of a 10 day special transmission in which we will give insight to different IMI chapters. Uh, let's take a look. Today's show highlights special greetings from Sister Lucy Mohammadi, New Zealand Indigenous Maori, an introduction to Medics International Television, a special segment on Shiism in New Zealand. A special presentation by Dr. Abdul Razak Musa on IPLS, and then special interviews from IMI New Zealand chapter representatives Dr. Adnan Ali and Dr. Sadiq Al Sakini, as well as a feature on IMI Australia by Dr. Kamran Ali. Also featured is a video on the University Medical Complex project in Pakistan, and then a special segment with Dr. Ahmer Jafri on Azadari in the COVID era.
Islam in New Zealand is a religious affiliation representing about 1.3% of the total population. of Muslim immigrants from South Asia and Eastern Europe settled in New Zealand from the early 1900 until the 1960s. Large-scale Muslim immigration began in the 1970s with the arrival of Fiji Indians followed in the 1990s by refugees from various war-torn countries. The first Islamic center opened in 1959 and there are now several mosques and two Islamic schools. The numbers of Muslim in New Zealand, according to the 2018 census, is 57,276. About 30% of this country's Muslim were born here. Of the remaining 70% who immigrated, most arrived in the past 20 years. The majority of New Zealand Muslims are Sunnis, but there's a large numbers of Shias who live in New Zealand concentrated mainly in Auckland, the largest city of New Zealand. In recent years, Shia Muslims have become active holding Ashura commemoration programs in Auckland parks. The first of these was conducted by the Fatma Zehra Charitable Association on 19 January 2008. This small but vibrant community has made a home for themselves in New Zealand but that was put at risk on 15 March 2019 when a terrorist attacked worshippers at two mosques in Christchurch, killing 51 people at the Earl Noon Mosque and Linwood Islamic Centre. The attacks took place on the Friday afternoon when worshippers inside the mosque were gathering for Juma prayers. The accused perpetrator of the attack was an Australian described as a white supremacist who intended to create an atmosphere of fear against Muslim. <laughs> However, a week after those attacks, a nationwide moment of silence was observed in New Zealand on Friday, ushered in by the Muslim call to press. and two-minute reflection were broadcast live on national media outlets and came as an estimated 20,000 people, including Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern. Speaking to mourners in the crowd, Prime Minister Ardern said, New Zealand mourns with you. Quoting Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, she said, the believers in their mutual kindness compassion and sympathy are just like one body. When any part of the body suffers, the whole body feels pain. They are thriving and vibrant, hosting events throughout the year on auspicious days. Over the past 30 years, IMI, a global organization has reached the farthest and most remote communities of Shias in Auckland. Where a group of physicians, healthcare professionals and community members make up a beloved IMI chapter. <laughs> 
During tonight's broadcast, we hope to highlight the contributions of our IMI New Zealand chapter. Tonight, we hope to highlight the activities of the community of the IMI chapter and invite you to the 2022 IMI International Conference in Auckland, New Zealand. You can play, I swear to Allah, until my last breath, I will remember Hussein. After almost 30 years of service to humanity, IMI is launching our very own television channel, MyTV, Medics International Television, The Voice of Humanity. MyTV has great potential to captivate audiences globally. The channel will provide multilingual programming available in English, French, Spanish, Urdu, Hindi, Arabic, Farsi, Turkish, and German. The network seeks to embody the principles of IMI uh, in line with IMI's core values and further the cause of empowering the communities that we work in globally. We, the humans, are restless. We are dreamers, inventors, adventurers, innovators, healers. We adapt to the harshest of climates and when tested to the limits, we come up with crazy solutions. We are designed to shatter myths. We are known to love the challenges and that's where the revolution starts and that's how we find the answers of our questions. The era between 7th till 12th century is considered to be the golden age of Islamic science. The foundation of modern science and research was laid down with the greats like Abu al-Qasim al-Zahrawi, father of modern surgery and the father of operative surgery. Ibn al-Nafis, father of circulatory physiology and anatomy. Abbas ibn Farnas, father of medieval aviation. Jabir ibn Hayyan, father of chemistry. Ibn Khaldun, father of sociology, historiography and modern economics. Ibn Sina, father of early modern medicine. Al Khwarizmi, most renowned as the father of algebra. But somewhere down the lane, we lost that drive for discovery and the wonders of research were lost to the dust of time. Imamia Medics International, one of the world's leading healthcare, education, relief, and disaster management non profit organization, has been striving hard to reconnect to the roots. Founded over 25 years ago, IMI's membership comprises of doctors, scientists, healthcare professionals, as well as philanthropists from around the world working to serve humanity in all corners of the world. Stepping up in modern times, IMI is launching its very own multilingual digital channel. MITV, a long-standing vision to create a unique platform to fill the void of holistic, scientific and social channel that serves the need of Muslim world. Aiming to give you the best, MITV will produce diversified programming on medical advancement, scientific research, culture, current affairs, sports, women issue, lifestyle, history as well as special shows for our youth. MITV will be a family TV which has something for everyone. With programs in several languages such as English, Urdu, French, German, Arabic and Persian, MITV 
as a platform for diverse voices of the Muslim to come together and share their scientific achievement. So tune into our arena to grow, improve and become the greatest in your field. My name is Jafar Naqvi. I was raised, born and raised in Karachi. Uh, did my bachelor's in science from Karachi University. Moved to uh, New York. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've spent more part of my life now in this area. I started my career in the pharmaceutical industry and in Karachi. Then in that same company that I worked in Karachi, offered me a job here in the United States, which is the reason I moved here. My special area of expertise became continuing medical education, which is where physicians, pharmacists, nurses, and other healthcare professionals have to get their certification in order to keep their licenses. very first meeting, I think, in the early 90s in Boston, they had their the inaugural meeting. Uh, I went there, uh, there were approximately about 100 physicians from across the country, which was very impressive. That was the first display of a community work that I saw after coming here, because I came here in 1973, and early 90s was the first time I saw a community group get together. So that was my first uh, interaction with uh, IMA. Their, their intensity of purpose, their niyat, as we call it. Uh, there was no uh, appeal for funds, but there was all this information. Here is what we are here to do. We want to help, we want to establish this, we want to com you know, establish clinics, not only in the United States, but in those areas where our community exists in India and Pakistan. Community groups are very, very important. They provide, we come from a society, we come from, come from a culture, which is very different from the culture that we land in. Pakistan, Karachi is very different from New York. So to land from Karachi into New York, into a profession in which you have to deal with Americans is not an easy job. And I wish I had somebody to hold my hand and say, Yahweh, this is how you deal with Americans. <clears throat> I had to learn all of that on my own and through a very hard process. So it is very, very important that organizations like IMI be respected. Because as I said, you need information when you come. And IMI is the only organization really in the healthcare field that has innovated this area and is helping people. So yeah, I would like to be a lot more help to IMI than I am right now, but that's how I try to, or I'm at least trying to give back to the community. I, I have done a few fundraisers uh, for IMI, and there is one sentence, I wish I could uh, relate it in Arabic, and that sentence is, if you save one life, it is as if you have saved humanity. It's a very powerful sentence. And if you will see that Imam Medics International actually has saved lives, well, not a few, but actually hundreds or maybe thousands 
every single day across the world. So what more can you ask from an organization uh, that is so close to what uh, Allah commands us to do? IMI is trying its best. It is really, really trying its best. The camps that it puts up in Karbala um, is an ex excellent example of how it goes out, reaches out to the community to help the community by treating, I think, like 20,000, 30,000 people in a, in a one week period. Absolutely no uh, doubt in my mind that the best place to, to really invest in is IMI because this is really very, very pure, honest, and without any doubt, without any doubt, the best place you can invest in. I really think there is a great need for people to invest in this organization, to understand the importance of this. Healthcare is a very important issue in this country. It is becoming increasingly difficult, especially for older patients, to get insurance. And Khudana Khasta, Khudana Khasta, anybody gets into a problem with health, they're going to be very, very serious problems. So I think that developing this organization, donating to this organization, giving whatever they can to this organization to help it blossom into some organization that can really help people is very, very important. We need to help uh, doctors in Pakistan understand the state of the art of uh, medical practice here in the United States. And this will be a great opportunity, this conference to an half day conference, where the US physicians will be able to impart the knowledge on the state of the art of the diagnosis and treatment of very important conditions so that they can tell the people of the doctors, physicians of Pakistan, this is what is happening in the country that is supposed to be the most advanced medical care company in the world. I think this is a must-go conference and absolutely, absolutely nobody should miss it. We now have the opportunity of hearing from Dr. Abdul Razak Musa, who will be presenting on an IMI endorsed project, International Pediatric Life Support. He is a pediatric emergency physician at the Women and Children's Hospital in South Australia and a senior lecturer at University of Adelaide. Uh, he also works in the IMI chapter of Australia. Uh, welcome, Dr. Musa. Welcome, Sister Shifa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's my sincere pleasure to be with, with you and uh, thanks for IMI for giving us the opportunity to share with you one of the projects we did to assist the children um, and youth in Iraq. Um, so we, uh, we are a group of um, emergency physicians and uh, general uh, pediatricians and general practitioner whom we thought that need to do something that uh, assists the Iraqi children. We made multiple trips to Iraq between 2003 and 2013. We gave many lectures and um, um, workshops, but we recognized that the effect of these lectures disappear after we return. So we decided to do uh, something special after we recognized that there was no pediatric life support training in most of the Iraqi hospitals or universities. Uh, so we we created an organization called IRG, which is the International uh, Resuscitation Group, which is non uh, non for profit organization in Australia. And then we start the uh, process of uh, writing the manuals and the uh, curriculum for the IPLS course, which is the International Pediatric Life Support course. Uh, that uh, the faculty of this course consists of uh, physicians in Australia, New Zealand, and Iraq. Um, 
and alhamdulillah after joining the IMI in about uh, 10 years ago and participating in two of the uh, Karbala uh, Arba'in medical camps uh, we were given the opportunity to present our uh, work to the IMI which alhamdulillah endorsed the course um, uh, and that was in 2015 uh, during the eighth international uh, medical conference in, in Iran. Uh, the, the concept of uh, IPLS based on the fact that resuscit pediatric resuscitation is everyone's business. It's not only the medical people, but also nurses and also um, general public. And we believe that any resuscitation is better than no resuscitation. And in our endeavor to make the course, we, um, we, uh, we, we try to make it simple basic and also reproducible so um, in terms of we thought about the sustainability of the course so one of the principles is that um, we trained a lot of medical and nursing staff in Iraq to become uh, IPLS instructors uh, so that obviously happened over about uh, six years and it took a lot of effort uh, and uh, participation not only from me but from um, from a couple of colleagues, which I'd like to mention, the Dr. Akil Al-Wa'ili, who is general uh, physician in, in Melbourne, in Australia, and Dr. Sinan Kamuna, who is an emergency physician in New Zealand. So after making the uh, manuals and setting it up, then we faced the issue of um, uh, getting the equipment. And as you are aware that the equipment, pediatric life support equipment are expensive. Um, so alhamdulillah with the donation and from here and there and uh, contributions we managed to buy uh, the equipment and one of the component is a mannequin which is a pediatric life support mannequin quite expensive about two thousand five hundred dollars um, so we started uh, by running the first three courses were started in 2014 in the three different children hospitals in Basra, Misan and Nasiriyah after the success of that, we thought to expand it. Um, so we, we expanded to uh, Baghdad and another governorate. Um, and during multiple trips, um, we also uh, managed to get um, each center to have its own mannequin. And this is obviously each center set up, set up will cost about $3,000. Uh, so during this year, alhamdulillah, we managed to establish uh, six seven centers in Iraq. Each of them has its own uh, IPLS instructors, which contains uh, consists of medical staff uh, and nursing staff. And they do a regular, they, they provide regular uh, course, uh, pediatric life support courses. It's interestingly like during the um, my uh, slide, which uh, I'm sure you show later, that one of the mannequins we bought in America because it's cheaper uh, to buy in from America and was brought to us by uh, brother uh, Sayyid Qasim uh, and sister uh, Sakina Razwi. Um, so I'd like to thank them for that in interesting gift. Uh, so at, at the moment we have uh, seven centers in Iraq. Uh, one in, in Baghdad, in Basra Medical College, uh, in Basra Teaching Hospital. There is also in Misa and Nasriya and also in Baghdad there are two centers, one at the Children Welfare Children Hospital and also Baghdad uh, Central Children Hospital. Uh, the course, as I mentioned, endorsed by the IMI and also has the support of the children at the, the hospital I'm working in and also an organization in Australia called APLS, which is the uh, advanced pediatric life support and uh, and also the course is endorsed by the uh, Arab Board for Health Specialization in Iraq. So with the time it became a, an essential component for people who find who are uh, doing or making uh, pediatric specialization in Iraq to attend the course. Uh, there's an important aspect of the course. As you know, all the training costs money. So on pediatric specialization, especially, is a bit expensive. So the internationally available courses cost about $3,000 each. But in our uh, intention from day one to make the, the course uh, free of charge for all the medical nursing staff. Uh, in fact, the uh, faculty also contribute to the, some of the essential components like uh, 
food and beverage that we provided during the course. Uh, I'd like uh, also in my, uh, in my talk, there is a link to the website that, uh, um, uh, that is called uh, IPLS.org. Uh, and uh, a quick visit to the website shows that the uh, the faculty is uh, uh, co consists of people who are in Australia and um, and in Iraq and they, they are uh, highly qualified professionals and Alhamdulillah this is the first time that in, uh, Iraq has uh, a dedicated uh, pediatric specialized course to train uh, children, uh, to train medical staff and nursing staff looking after children. Uh, if we go to the website itself, um, it shows all the current uh, centers in Iraq. It also, uh, it's, Alhamdulillah, we have a center in Australia. And that is uh, the course now provided to the med fifth year medical student in Adelaide Medical School uh, in University of um, Adelaide. And this is really, uh, and obviously the course is endorsed by IMI. This is, alhamdulillah, a blessing um, that we are able to establish uh, a course that run both in uh, in developing and developed countries. So the uh, the course has been evaluated by University of Adelaide and found it suitable for the medical student. And we run this course four times a year here uh, in Australia. And again, it's, it's free of charge. Um, and we provide again the equipment and this is alhamdulillah barakat of imami and ahlul bayt to enable us to serve people here in australia and in iraq our intention was uh, to have this course established in other countries we are planning to establish it in in, in the islamic republic of Syria, iran and also in, in pakistan but unfortunately with the uh, with covid that made uh, the the process uh, a bit challenging uh, we hope also we are in the process of establishing another course called International Neonatal Life Support Course and that looks after the newborn uh, and the reason behind that is um, we recognize that the new the medical staff looking after a newborn do not have a specific uh, neonatal life support course and for that uh, aspect we managed to have a special uh, access to a uh, an online module that run in our hospital that give us uh, the opportunity for doctors and nurses in Iraq to access uh, this uh, module ag again free of charge. And also during the process we created a specific e-learning module for the medical student in Basra where they go through uh, multiple scenarios that is based on interaction and also um, dialogue and in a very interactive and uh, uh, engaging a process uh, and that that took a lot of effort from uh, brothers who are IT engineers in Iraq to make the online module so instead of the student reading a book uh, it will go through the course component before attending the practical section uh, so they go the e-learning module after that they will uh, attend the face-to-face -face, uh, training for half a day um, so I would like to, uh, again, like going through the uh, website itself, it gives us the number the, and the, on the archive section, the number of the courses that run, which is about uh, 50 of them over the last several years, both here in Iraq and Australia. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, here in, in Australia, the IMI chapter worked hard really to, uh, to, to get this done. So we thought, and instead of doing something here in Australia, given the medical advancement in this country, we try to uh, take the skills and knowledge uh, from a group of professionals to the much needed places. And uh, Alhamdulillah, the process succeeded. And we are pleased that despite that we haven't been to Iraq for uh, three years now, uh, that the courses are run by themselves and with the help and assistance of uh, uh, of the instructors that uh, we have uh, trained in various uh, centers. So uh, I would like to thank uh, again the, our uh, colleague and brothers and sisters in IMI to give us the opportunity to share this uh, project with you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to expand this uh, program to other hospitals in Iraq and other hospitals in, 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 in other countries like Pakistan, India or, or in the Islamic Republic of Iran, inshallah.
uh, thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for being on our show today. And uh, we also, you know, join you in praying for the success of this project uh, and, and for the people of Iraq as well. Thank you very much, Sister Shifa, and uh, Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we'll uh, catch up sometimes, maybe during the next uh, Arba'in medical camp, uh, camp. Inshallah, for sure. <laughs> At the auspicious moment of IMI's launch uh, of the, our own television, MyTV, well-wishers across the globe sent in videos. Let's watch some of those now. من خلال عملنا الدؤوب قد نأتي بحلول يراها البعض منا ضربا من الجنون سيما عندما نعلن عن ثورة في آلية إيصال خدماتنا لمن يبتغي الاستشارة في الطبية في وقت تعيش فيه معظم الأطراف إن لم نقل جميعها بظروف قاسية على درجات متفاوتة من الشدة يشهد التاريخ أن العالم الإسلامي مر بعصر ذهبي من تصدر نشر البحث العلمي ومنه البحث الطبي ما بين القرنين الميلاديين السابع والثاني عشر ونحن في جمعية إمامية ميديكس انترناشنال نستلهم من الذين تصدروا منصات العلوم ما يعيننا على الاستمرار في ما يحتمه الواجب الإنساني والسلوك المهني منذ تأسيس جمعيتنا قبل ما يزيد عن ربع قرن دعينا الله تعالى أن يتقبل منا هذا القليل I want to take this opportunity to congratulate MI Channel and uh, this will be an avenue to bring amazing programs in the future and congratulations again Mubarak. very excited to hear uh, that IMI is coming up with a scientific and medical family channel. A uh, channel of this magnitude and idea was greatly needed in the Muslim world. It is sure to help highlight the glorious Muslim scientific past and provide inspiration to our youth, highlighting the community's talent and achievements as well as IMI's work globally. My best wishes to the production team. Uh, may you succeed in inspiring an entire generation towards science, technology and education. I would now like to invite two special guests for our next segment. The first is Dr. Adnan Ali, part of the IMI Global Board of Regents and a foundational member of the IMI New Zealand chapter. He's worked as a consultant plastic surgeon in Iraq, contracted with the three 
district health boards in Auckland. He's worked as a plastic surgeon specialist, medical officer in New Zealand, and in private practice at New Lynn, Auckland. Uh, he's participated in art exhibitions in Iraq and New Zealand, and has had a personal exhibition at the Iraqi Museum for Modern Art in 1984. I would also like to invite our second guest, Dr. Sadiq al Sakini, I'm my New Zealand chapter president. Currently, he's a specialist histopathologist and cytopathologist and works for anatomical pathology services at the Auckland District Hospital. Welcome both Dr. Adnan and Dr. Sadiq. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, you know, as two uh, vital members of the New Zealand community, I'd like to ask you about the Shia community in New Zealand. So, yeah, Dr. Sada. Please tell us. Bismillah ar wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Khatam al anbiya wa al-Arsir wa al-Mursaleen. Assalamu alaykum, brothers and sisters. Thank you very much for inviting us to uh, share with you uh, some of uh, the informations about us here in the end of the world, New Zealand, the, the, the last thing on the map. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, Shia Ahlul Bayt is the world, and uh, we are delighted to be in this part of the world to uh, spread the uh, uh, flag of Ali and the follower of Ahlul Bayt in this remote, remote uh, country. Uh, uh, New Zealand is a very peaceful country. Uh, you have heard we had some, some uh, terrorist attack. It's the first terrorist, unfortunately, the first attack in this country. And unfortunately, Muslims, but Alhamdulillah, this country is resilient. We all uh, lived throughout that crisis a couple of years ago in, uh, uh, in a peaceful way. And we ended up more consolidated. And to be honest, uh, 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 although uh, condolences goes to the, to those victims and their families, we as a country uh, uh, got through it in a stronger way. And New Zealand uh, uh, Muslims now are feeling actually uh, uh, the sacrifice of those people who passed away in, in a good way. We can cr express ourselves, not only Muslims, all the minorities in this country actually have benefited from that. And Alhamdulillah, we hope that all the world will make uh, uh, this uh, experience of this country as a whole, uh, as a role model, inshallah, to spread peace all over the world, inshallah. Inshallah, thank you so much. And uh, Dr. Adnan, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the IMI chapter of New Zealand? Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, uh, IMI New Zealand actually uh, started in the fifth international IMI conference that was in Najaf. If you, those who participated, you might remember this poster. Yeah, so that, that's the IMI conference in, in Najaf when the, say, Dr. Uh, Waji Razavi has approached me and they um, advised me to establish the chapter. And then we got the support, of course, from the uh, our senior colleagues there, uh, Dr. Abdul Zahra, the Dean of the Faculty of the Medical School in Kufa, and he, uh, he uh, uh, welcomed us actually with three consequent years going there as a uh, lecturer in the medical school, as well as the Iraqi Board of Plastic Surgery and Maxillofacia. So that we, on, under the umbrella of the uh, Imami Medics International. Uh, back in Oakland, uh, we got this uh, conference actually, the uh, it's uh, the Common World Conference in Auckland University, and that Dr. Sadat II and I was uh, was were given the first opportunity uh, in 2013 to to announce in in, in the local uh, uh, media in New Zealand that we established the, the conference. Alhamdulillah, since then we are going there and we have uh, participate with the in the Arbain mission. Of course, it's, it's a teamwork, it's not only one man job. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Imad, he's, uh, the, yeah, Imad Jabawi, he's a pharmacist and other volunteers, they brought a uh, few cages of uh, medical aids actually. Dr. Imad arranged it, uh, he's the coordinator of the IMI New Zealand chapter now. Uh, as well as when I went to uh, Arbaim Mission, we got the volunteers. Yeah, um, and, and use uh, Kiwi volunteers there. Uh, they help us, they are not medical professional or health professional. 
but they help us in uh, uh, say Simon in, in the uh, reception and Sister Mahadi in, in the cleaning the uh, ladies' uh, side. Yeah, and, uh, and also uh, Dr. Sana Salman, she's uh, she's an I'm, I am I member. She also uh, went to uh, the Iraqi uh, medical exhibition to share experience of the uh, that we have what we have learned from the New Zealand system. Uh, and sadly, to uh, that we lost two uh, members actually, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Haider Okra and and, and uh, Dr. Uh, Jamal Shawi. This is the photo in, in Meshed in the Imamiya Medics International Conference, uh, the eighth one in Meshed. Yeah, they, sadly they they passed away. Now, uh, currently, Alhamdulillah, we got a, a good support from the TRS. TRS, the Rising Sun, they are giving us the, the, the logistic support for our uh, conference that we are planning to go uh, next year, inshallah, yep. uh, with the also support of the Iraqi Health Professional uh, of New Zealand. It's an organization that will, they will uh, participate, inshallah, um, and a few other uh, volunteers are coming to, uh, let me say, uh, delegates. They present their work, uh, the scientific conference, yeah, including uh, Shema Ali. She's a PhD candidate. She's uh, we will talk about epilepsy management and other volunteers, other, other delegates. Alhamdulillah, we we'll get the blessing of the uh, the Maraj and, and also the the religious leaders from uh, Iraq and uh, elsewhere, as well as the uh, Sada and Shiok here in in, in New Zealand. They, they are blessing us, and we get the apart from the Muslim community, we have the non-Muslim also uh, support. Uh, Dr. Kerry Melo has uh, donated few, uh, quite a uh, lot of things to the uh, Arba'in missions, and also he helped me in uh, putting the Imamiya uh, medical mission in on the New Zealand heralds. Yeah, the other actually the, the New Zealand the, the Auckland Cathedral also. Uh, they supported us in uh, being in, as I am my membership in the in uh, New Zealand uh, Shia Muslim Christian Council, and uh, yeah, we have volunteers. Uh, this is the miners in in, in Baker Field. Yeah, this is the Joyce who she she who came to uh, Najaf and she had the walk uh, in uh, Arba'in Mission. Uh, she's a very supportive nurse. She yeah, and uh, yeah, we are uh, we do have alhamdulillah the haram, haram is, is coming uh, we do any annual uh, blood donation yeah non-muslims also volunteer uh, uh, or, or donated blood to the to the imam yeah and we have some uh, humanitarian activities that uh, uh, we we participate in the al quds day the annual Al Quds Day, the last Friday of uh, uh, Ramadan, and as well as the, the uh, peaceful protest uh, on uh, uh, Myanmar uh, and a uh, few other uh, opportunities. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, we are uh, trying our best. Uh, and we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to accept this uh, little efforts for the effect of uh, the defending Islam and uh, giving the a good uh, face for the Muslims that to counteract what the the uh, Islamophobia is that's running everywhere. Uh, unfortunately, thank you very much. Of course, thank you so much. And and I would like to ask you know uh, Dr. Sadiq Al Sakini as well uh, about the plans for an IMI international conference in uh, November of next year. If you can talk a little bit about the planning. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, uh, we are planning now with the help of the uh, 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 TRS group, the Zing Sun group, which is the young, very young, talented uh, Muslims who are working with us uh, uh, to organize the logistics. And inshallah, we are preparing a very good informative conference. It's going to be held, inshallah. May Allah help us uh, uh, to. Uh, uh, the COVID uh, restrictions here in New Zealand. Alhamdulillah, we, we, we don't have COVID here, Alhamdulillah, 
we, we live in just normal life, but the problem is the country is closed from elsewhere. So we don't accept anyone now. But inshallah, by the, by the beginning of the year, we will, uh, uh, restrictions will be uh, uh, released and we will be able to arrange that conference. Now, um, the government actually is very supportive to, to us uh, as Muslims. We, we have annual aid uh, ration in the parliament. I, was, I had the honor to represent the uh, IMI as well as the uh, a part of the North Shore Foundation to be to, uh, to represent there, and uh, uh, we have that annual uh, uh, celebration every year. We had we didn't have it last year because of the COVID, but for this year we had it, and there was a promise that, inshallah, when restrictions uh, released, uh, inshallah, we will be able to uh, get you in. Now, uh, logistics are working. Uh, uh, in terms of the uh, workshops and lectures, I have uh, we have arranged uh, uh, sort of a, a preliminary uh, program. It will be formative. We hope to see you here in Auckland, New Zealand, uh, inshallah, next year, and uh, 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 in person, inshallah, all in a good health. Inshallah, thank you so much. And and you know, you spoke a little bit about the COVID situation. Of course, it's something that. Um, has uh, taken the whole world uh, over. Um, Dr. Adnan, you had uh, mentioned in your presentation about um, the COVID response of New Zealand, uh, about the, the yeah. sending of medical supplies. If you can speak a little bit about that and what the IMI physicians are doing uh, to combat uh, vaccine hesitancy and promote uh, healthy, uh, healthy protocols during COVID. Yeah, as health professional, we all are been uh, working together to, uh, to control this uh, pan epidemic here. But it's under control, alhamdulillah. From uh, ethnic group point of view, there is a, a video clip, in, which is a property of the Minister of Health. Uh, I've been involved with it actually to uh, talk about this. Uh, in, in two occasions about the pandemic and mainly about the vaccine. It's an Arabic language, but the way uh, I was introduced to the, uh, to the public as an uh, IMI uh, member of the Board of Region. Uh, Alhamdulillah, so they, we, we try our best. So the vaccination is going on a uh, little bit slower than the, uh, probably less of the rest of the world. But we are catching up uh, with the uh, third group, which is now it's uh, uh, above uh, uh, 55 and the uh, pregnant ladies, uh, any age, uh, are people with uh, some disabilities or those who are looking after people with disabilities. Yeah, this is the, the group now and going gradually to the younger age group. So it's under control as the Dr. Saad mentioned, so it's, it's, it's the uh, current war, alhamdulillah, we're free, uh, COVID free now, and we try our best to keep it as such. Jazakumullah. Thank you so much. And, and if I can just uh, hear from both of you, also the viewers would want to know what uh, Muharram looks like for the New Zealand community this year. Alhamdulillah, we are one of the few blessed countries uh, uh, to uh, have actually uh, no restrictions in, in having all the majalis. Uh, we had the opportunity to do all our actually uh, Eid, Salat uh, and program for Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, we shukur. All in, in normal life and inshallah, we had a very, very uh, uh, talented program uh, uh, this uh, Muharram inshallah we will have majalis in the centers in Auckland I think about five or six majalis uh, big centers will be working all face to face uh, the only problem that we had we used to have overseas uh, visitors and lecturers and and uh, Sada and and Shiuch coming unfortunately we will not have them but uh, with the help of the Zoom and, and connections, it's, and the locals, of course, we are doing it. Inshallah, we have uh, programs, as I said, all over Auckland and New Zealand, including Hamilton and Wellington and, and Dunedin, all in life, alhamdulillah, face-to-face. Uh, -face. And uh, uh, during this, we'll, we will advertise, as we used to do every year, for the uh, do blood donation. Uh, a, a 
appeal. It's IMI initiative uh, to have a blood donation appeal every Muharram uh, uh, to help the community and to pay back part of the uh, uh, part of our uh, job, uh, our duties to this uh, um, uh, uh, peaceful community. Inshallah. Inshallah. That as an example, yeah. Sorry, as, as an example of the support that we have from uh, our religious scholars, uh, I've sent to uh, Brother Ashar the speech of uh, say uh, uh, Muhammad Saleh Al Mudarisi. I, I appreciate if you uh, presented uh, following this interview. Uh, he talked about the, the preparation that was done actually yesterday, and he's making a dua and blessing our service as IMI members. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for sure, we will play that. And, and also, uh, I'll introduce the uh, uh, the COVID video uh, uh, and the um, the video that you had uh, uh, giving us uh, many blessings and uh, good greetings on the launch of I, uh, my TV. Can you bring them back? Uh, We'll do like a conclusion. I'll ask you for your final thoughts. Yeah. Um, uh, if you would have the opportunity in the last minute to invite you uh, sincerely to this view country, I'm not advertising that because I live here. It's really peace of, of the khalq of Allah. It's beautiful. And if you see this country, Masha Allah, what the heaven will be, inshallah, when we all go past uh, this this life. Uh, it's beauty. I'm, I'm really honestly encouraging everyone to, inshallah, come and see this country and enjoy the blessing of Allah. Allah, give all of us the peace and health and accept all our deeds for the sake of Allah and Ahlul Bayt. Thank you very much. And Dr. Adnan, if you have any final thoughts. Well, uh, we welcome everyone. Uh, we are serving uh, uh, mankind in general here in New Zealand and overseas during our mission or the flood in Pakistan, or we have been in the, uh, uh, just after the earthquake in uh, uh, Christchurch in 2011. So the serving is, uh, regardless of people's uh, ethnic group, religion, madhab, uh, or skin color or others. So the beneficiaries in IMI service, like all other chapters, are not specifically certain group. Uh, we, uh, we, we need your dua to carry on our service. Barakallah. Thank you so much to Dr. Adnan and Dr. Sadiq for joining us today. Uh, and we hope to, again, see you soon for the international conference, uh, IMI's international conference in New Zealand in November 2022. I give thanks and acknowledgements to Dr. Adnan Ali as his untiring efforts and dedication have not gone unnoticed. Thank you, Dr. Adnan Ali, for all that you do for our community, both here in Aotearoa as well as international. Uh, I would personally like to thank and to invite our professionals in Aotearoa and around the world to attend the International Imamia Medics uh, Conference in November 2022. This is a great opportunity to be part of this course. So please, please take up the opportunity and register. Now, um, a brief um, summary about what, uh, what I do within the community, our local community. Um, community Service Connect Trust was founded by myself and uh, we've been operating for around four and a half years now as well as um, I must also acknowledge the people who have been very instrumental in uh, setting up this organisation, uh, our trustees, 
uh, as well as our volunteers. We actually started off with uh, feeding the homeless in Auckland City Centre. Uh, with feeding the homeless, it wasn't just the physical feeding, it was actually that connection with fellow human beings, especially uh, our homeless being vulnerable um, and a whole array of um, complexities, um, mental health, issues, um, disconnection with families, uh, dysfunctional, coming from dysfunctional families, uh, some having no families. Um, so it, um, it was a real, real insight at first. Uh, a connection was needed, um, understanding of course, and um, non-judgmental embracing uh, the opportunity to help vulnerable people. So since then we've carried on and um, we are now um, within our local communities, not just feeding the homeless. We also help to advocate. We work with prisoners coming out of prison, uh, rehabilitation services under a holistic umbrella. Um, each, you know, the needs are come in various sizes, different shapes, forms, um, very complex needs at that. Um, we, you know, deal with suicide as a big one. So um, in terms of whole order, our well-being, it is very important to keep ourselves safe first and foremost. Karakia is most important. Uh, with dealing uh, with social in the social services environment. Um, so totally love what I do um, and I do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I thank you for this opportunity and being part of this kaupapa and I leave you all at this time um, to be well, keep safe, especially with COVID. Um, ngā mihi ki a koutou, tēnā rā koutou katoa, kā kite anō. For our next segment, we have the coordinator of IMI's Australia chapter, Dr. Kamran Ali. He is a general practitioner in Brisbane, Australia, and originally from Quetta, Pakistan. Welcome, Dr. Kamran. Thank you for having me. So, you know, I, we would like to know, uh, as the IMI Australia coordinator, what does uh, um, Muharram in Australia look like uh, during COVID? Well, the situation is different because of this ongoing COVID. Now, just to just to give you a brief uh, information, like because I live in Brisbane in Queensland and we are still in lockdown, and which will be over today at 4 p.m. Uh, and New South Wales is already in, in lockdown. So it's uh, because Australia is a big country, so it's a bit different for uh, different uh, states. Uh, but if I talk uh, on my behalf, uh, I have a feeling because of this ongoing uh, situation, we will have a uh, problem uh, like last year. So we were not able to to do the Muharram programs as we normally do every year. So it will be more, I think, online as we did last year. Um, and, you know, our Australia chapter is is uh, formulating um, very quickly. So um, what's in store for the IMI Australia chapter uh, in the next coming months and uh, year? Well, uh, I'm glad to say that, that um, I'm, I'm part of this uh, IMI chapter program and uh, I've been in touch with uh, different uh, people uh, trying to get more people involved to be part of this uh, uh, this program. And uh, so far we have, um, alhamdulillah, five or six people who have committed to be part of the program. Uh, there are doctors and there are non-doctors as well. And I'm already in the process of uh, speaking to more people uh, in uh, Melbourne and um, I'm hoping that inshallah in the next few weeks uh, we will have a formal meeting and then we can launch, relaunch uh, I would say uh, in a way so that we can work independently 
uh, as an IMI uh, Australia chapter. Definitely. And so, uh, you know, for all of those listening and, and um, tuning in, um, they can contact you as the coordinator uh, if they would like to join. Yes, uh, I'm glad. Like, I would be more than happy for anyone to join uh, the IMI. And uh, um, you can share my contact details. Uh, I can be contacted by my mobile or email, whatever is easy. Uh, I'm happy to, to speak to them. Perfect. And, you know, we have big plans, uh, inshallah, for uh, things to open back up for Australia and New Zealand and to host our IMI's international conference in November of uh, 2022. Um, so we hope to, you know, see you there um, and, and hope that the Australia chapter will, will be there in full force. Yes, inshallah. I'm, I'm very excited about this program. Uh, last week, I spoke to Dr. Adnan Ali from um, IMI New Zealand and uh, because Australia and New Zealand like it's like a bubble. Uh, so it would be much easier for us to travel there and to be part of that uh, this uh, program which is being held next year. So and we have just over a year time and I'm pretty sure inshallah with the hard work uh, from my side and also from the IMI um, headquarters uh, and also with the help of New Zealand we will get more people uh, to be involved and then we can travel easily to make this program much bigger. Definitely thank you so much uh, and do you have any final thoughts on um, the IMI Australia chapter and, and maybe an invitation for all those to join you in, in this cause? Well I would just like to say that people who are interested uh, to join IMI Australia, uh, I would be happy just to talk to them and we just need someone or anyone could be just part of that, not necessarily they have to be like involved full time. Uh, that would be great, uh, great, I would say. Definitely, and, and it's such a large and, and vibrant uh community that you have so inshallah we we wish you the best and we hope uh, to see you uh, very soon at the new zealand conference Dr. Zainab Sayed, um, and uh, I studied medicine actually, it was my second degree. Um, I originally did business and then I went to business and I was like, this is not what I want. So um, I ended up actually coming back and doing medicine. Um, currently, uh, I'm pulmonary and critical care specialist. Uh, so I did internal medicine and then I did pulmonary and critical care specialty. So many times people will say money is never going to make it, money is never enough or they'll say you know so many things if you're not happy it doesn't matter how many people around you you know want you to be there, you don't want to be there, you don't want to get up in the morning and I think that is what it is. It is that they always say find the career that makes you happy so you get up in the morning. I heard there was a residency guidance seminar and I came. I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea where to do my applications, where to apply, um, how to go through my CV, how to go through my personal statement. They walked me through it. And um, mashallah, it was, it was them. They, they the ones who supported me the most and I 
and I got a residency, you know, God willing, it was, it was the support of our own community that helped us. IMI, I think, works on such a grassroots level that this is its power. Um, the people who are involved in IMI are the people you see every day. Whereas in other organizations, there's somebody who's far, far away and nobody knows who they are and nobody knows where the money goes and you don't see it. IMI, it's visible. They're here, the whole, wherever you are. I mean, the whole community is so outreachable. We all know we need a center for our community to go to and maybe create some place where elderly people can come for daycare. We all know we need it, but who actually institutes it and makes it happen? This, this organization. They take all these people who have the power, the motivation, but don't have the means and give them the means to do amazing things across the, across the globe, actually. IMI basically generates its earnings from a lot of donations. That's uh, largely where they get their earnings. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people, what they do, and, and that's me included, is uh, we have a monthly donation to them. So automatically, every month, and anyone can be a participant in this, every month they will automatically take some donation. Now, Islamically, you know, this donation can be used as an Islamic means, but um, even if not, it's a, still a donation to a good cause that you know is going to have an end result. So that is the biggest, the biggest and nicest, most satisfying part of knowing where your money is going. Dr. Raji is, is the main founder and he has created this organization in such a way and across the globe there are, there are many men who are involved. It is the women that are becoming even more involved now. In New Jersey alone, we have something called the Women's Wing of IMI where the women of the community have created it so that they are individually directors or basically in charge of their subsections. If you have a question about finance, well, did you know that there's an IMI Women's Wing and there's a financial director there? And she runs like in Merrill Lynch and you know, they work in big, big companies. During Muharram, it's especially important for our community members to remain vigilant against the COVID-19 virus. IMI's infectious disease specialists have created a series of videos on how to do that exactly. Let's take a look. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ahmer Jafri. I am an infectious disease physician. I reside in New Jersey and I've been practicing and infectious disease as a physician since 2013. I currently work in Eastern Pennsylvania in the Bethlehem and Lehigh Valley area. My topic today will be on precautions and safeguards that measure, that masjids can take as they reopen for Muharram this year during the COVID pandemic. But before I begin, I'd like to recite a quotation from our Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, who said, Verily, there is a warmth in the hearts of the believers for the martyrdom of al Hussein that will never cool off. Just a brief introduction on the huge impact of the deadly COVID-19 virus, which has impacted our daily lives tremendously since it was declared a global pandemic by the WHO in March of 2020. It is affecting our daily lives and it is a pandemic with far reaching impact and implications. According to data from Johns Hopkins, the US has suffered from 35.8 million cases attributed to COVID-19 infection with 616,000 deaths. 
globally there have been 202 million cases with 4.2 million plus deaths. Undoubtedly, COVID is on the rise, which is very alarming, as we are seeing more cases in the U.S. and globally, particularly due to the Delta variant, which is particularly dangerous as it spreads quickly and easily, particularly amongst unvaccinated individuals. However, we are also seeing, unfortunately, breakthrough cases amongst those who have been vaccinated also. It is incumbent upon us to safeguard ourselves during this holy month of Muharram. We are concerned for the safety of the Azadars of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, as we are expecting large attendances globally. We feel now more than ever, it is time to stay vigilant and reinforce some simple measures to safeguard ourselves and our community. Imam Medics International is pleased to coordinate for the first time a discussion on the topic of COVID in Muharram. Over the next 10 nights, inshallah, a panel of physicians will discuss this important matter. Topics that will be discussed include precautions that masjids can take this Muharram while reopening for the COVID, while reopening during the COVID pandemic, do's and don'ts of attending majlis this Muharram, COVID vaccine safety and efficacy. We will discuss the Delta variant strain and we will also address frequently answered questions in regards to COVID. As stated earlier, my topic tonight will focus on safety precautions that our Imam Bargas and Masjids can take as they reopen this Muharram. And that will begin now. Masjids should always refer to their local health officials and agencies first before deciding to open to see if it's safe. If the center decides to open during these nights of Muharram, these guidelines should be considered. Try to keep the number of participants within the percentage allowed in the masjid by your city. If possible, depending on the weather, try to organize the programs in the parking lot or a nearby park where you can accommodate more people while adhering to the limitation on numbers and other restrictions. Consider setting an age limit to minimize the risk for vulnerable believers, such as the elderly and children. If possible, scan the temperature of the attendees at the entrance. Also, record the name and contact number of participants so that if it is determined later that an attendee was in fact infected with COVID-19 infection, then this would allow for contract, uh, contact tracing. Uh, thereafter, subsequent precautions and referral for testing uh, would be permissible and uh, necessary as deemed. We should encourage vaccination within our community. Unfortunately, vaccine hesitancy is a real phenomenon and there's also a lot of uh, misinformation regarding the vaccine. But the vaccine is safe and it is effective. Next, masjids should focus on reducing or limiting capacity. Those who have been fully vaccinated should be given preference for indoor attendance. Capacity for indoor attendance should be limited such that a social, a safe social distance can be maintained and the CDC still asserts a six foot distance. Offer live streams so people may watch the majlis from the comfort of their home. The next recommendation is that the centers should post signs and reminders for social distancing um, etiquette. Face masks should stay on at all times with mask and nose covered. Uh, maintaining social distance as discussed before is of paramount importance. Try to refrain from congregating in small places. Refrain from attending in person if you are ill. Avoid shaking hands and close contact with others. Avoid bottleneck areas at entrance exits, the shoe room for example. Next, the center should offer hand sanitizer throughout the masjid so that it is readily available. In regards to social and physical distancing, try to maintain a physical distance of six feet apart as much as possible. The masjid should provide physical guides such as 
tape on floors or walkways on, and signs on walls to ensure that people remain at least six feet apart in lines and at other times while congregating. In regards to ventilation and outdoor seating, the center could consider the use of HEPA filters placed around the room to allow for air purification. Open windows if possible to allow for ventilation. This may be challenging, however, due to heat and extreme weather, but fortunately most of our gatherings will occur in the evening or at nighttime, which should allow for cooler temperatures. Some masjids may, may choose to set up outdoor tents to allow for additional outdoor seating. This may further reduce numbers in the main hall where the majlis is uh, being conducted. We are well aware that over the next few nights we'll have very busy nights and we can expect large attendance on certain nights, especially on the weekends and on the nights leading up to Ashura as well as Arbaim. On these particular nights, it should be incumbent upon the centers to try to conduct programs outdoors if possible. While this may be logistically challenging and difficult due to extremes of weather and heat, this notion should at least be entertained as viral transmission is greatly reduced outdoors. Cleaning and uh, disinfecting will have a large priority of importance during these nights. The center should focus on cleaning high touch surfaces and objects regularly and consistently. Focus on high touch surfaces and objects such as doorknobs, tables, handles, light switches, uh, phones, remote controls, uh, electronic equipment, uh, and countertops. Clean other surfaces when they are visibly dirty or as needed. Centers should also have a, a plan in place uh, if or when a staff member or congregant becomes sick. They should first initially identify an area to separate anyone who exhibits symptoms of COVID-19 infection during hours of operation. They should then notify local health officials if a person is diagnosed with COVID infection that has been in the facility and then communicate this information with staff and congregants about, poten about potential exposure while maintaining confidentiality. Advise those with exposure to a person diagnosed with COVID infection to stay home and self-monitor for symptoms. Lastly, the, the centers should close off areas used by that sick individual and to not use the area until after cleaning and disinfection has been done. In regards to food distribution and the barak, serving hot tea, juice, or sharbat, or open food should be avoided to prevent bowel transmission. If, however, open food will be served, please serve food outdoors to avoid indoor crowd congestion, or alternately, and better yet perhaps, distribute the barak to go. My references for this talk are from the CDC, the Johns Hopkins COVID tracking data, as well as a um, announcement from Imami Medics International recently. Thank you so much for your attention and please stay safe. IMI is funded by members and people like you. Our beneficiaries include individuals from all backgrounds without regard to re religious affiliation. IMI has worked over the years to serve millions, providing general medical care to over 3 million people, to provide free or low cost medicine to more than a million patients. And over the past 25 years, we've provided underserved communities with more than $12 million worth of consultative pharmaceutical and diagnostic services. To see how you can help, please visit um, IMI's website, www.imamiamedics.com and see the donation details below.
Pakistan's healthcare system has been on a backseat for a very long time. With a shocking less than 3% of its GDP allocated on healthcare expenditure, much of the 212 million population struggles to find quality and affordable healthcare. According to a 2017 World Bank report, Pakistan has only 6.3 hospital beds for every 10,000 people. After 27 years of exhaustive service for the community, with the establishment of several clinics across Pakistan, maintaining a life-saving ambulance services network, providing karz hasna and scholarships to countless medical professionals and healthcare workers, running an excellent 24-7 blood transfusion service, and fighting the COVID pandemic from Gilgit, Baltistan, Barachinar to Thar Desert, Imamia Medics International is positioned to serve humanity at an entirely new level. University Medical Complex is IMI's contribution to shoulder the dismal state of healthcare in Pakistan. In one of the top 10 most populous cities in the world, IMI, along with Bakr Health and Education Welfare Trust, with the support of Zaidi Abad Foundation USA, are working together to construct a state-of-the-art 500-bedded hospital. A bold and sophisticated healthcare initiative that will provide world-class medical care to the community at a fraction of cost. This 10-story building will host state-of-the-art medical facilities and will be backed by a highly skilled international faculty. This project will cost approximately 8 to 10 million US dollars. 2 million dollars is required urgently to start the construction immediately. Life begins in hospitals and it often ends in hospitals. And in between, we try to avoid hospitals as much as we can. But we live our lives hoping to get a great as opportunity as this that will create a support system which will touch the lives of so many of our fellow citizens. Halmin Nasirin Yansurina, is there anyone to help me? We call on you to become the Ansar of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, to help further the cause of saving humanity one life at a time. Help create a future hospital that will ensure the highest level of healthcare for generations and be the pride of the community a showcase project that the community could be proud of. Labbaik Ya Hussain